Hey man. Yo, I uh I just signed on. I'm gonna I'm gonna start playing on the B team. You're gonna forget about me, and uh, I'm gonna sit here for four years. I'm gonna make more wage than half of your first team, and then I'm gonna leave on a free. I'm not gonna make you any money. That's uh that's just how this works. Uh, because you need a B team, or else you're stupid or something, you know. Thank you. All right. I'll see you later. I'll be back in three years. We'll be on the island because you won't even be paying attention to what happens. We should probably do something about that. Um, any ideas? Hello, my name is Zealand. Welcome to another video. <laughs> I promised myself I wasn't gonna be that guy. Now we're that guy. What's up guys, Nepenthes? <sighs> that's not it, is it? What's poppin'? Zealand, here with another video. That's it, that's the one. Zealand, you tell too many jokes. I agree. Let's get on with the video. And we're talking about B teams today. Why they suck. Why they don't help you. Uh, how they can help you if you use them right in a very specific situation. Uh, but mainly, recently, I've gotten a lot of messages about people complaining that their B team, with whatever team that they're currently managing, uh, is not playing matches, not helping them at all, and costing them money and what they should do about it. So here I am helping you figure out what you should do about it and how to not anger anybody and achieve your goals. So first off, what is a B team? Well, right now we're looking at my save with Janeros, which I play on Twitch. You can come and hang out with me on Twitch when I'm playing Football Manager or not. The link is down in the description. Just give it a follow. You get a notification when I go live. And that was probably obvious. We're looking at Janeros and Janeros does not have a B team. If you want to figure out if you have a B team, uh, go to your development center, click on it. And if there is a team that does not have an age in it, it is your B team. And in things getting really weird and you happen to be in one of those nations that you have like an actual B team, Barcelona, B, Dortmund 2, whatever, uh, you can even click on a player, go to development, and you will have the opportunity to send that player to the B team. Now, Gineros, does not have that. So I'm going to have to create a custom game in order to make the rest of this video. Ha, <sighs> <sighs> I actually don't. I did a save with Dortmund earlier this year and we won the Champions League in two years. So most of you probably don't remember it because it was lightning fast, but Dortmund does have one of the types of B teams that I really want to warn you about. You see, there are two types of B teams, the ones that I described in the second half of one of the previous clips and the ones I described in the first half. Uh, the first half uh, are the ones that are reserve teams. They are associated directly with your control system. So if you build a tree, right? Uh, and you are club A. Club A has then a direct line Right, if I don't know why I switched. Reese, bring it over here. Club A has a direct line of clubs beneath it. There's Club A, Reserve Club, you whatever's, and then, you know, whatever your head of youth development is doing, which if we reference a past video is apparently not much. What Dortmund has is a reserve club, a B team that is not actually directly under your control. Now, these are the reserve teams that you can technically manage in the game. You see, if you are Chelsea, who I managed in the beta, you have an under 23s team that you can't manage in the game. It's just not possible. You're not allowed to manage uh, reserve teams or under 23s, which count as reserves. Remember in this video earlier when I said, if there is a team that does not have an age in it, it is your B team. I lied. Under 23s are a B team because usually under 23s leagues will allow you to play as many older players uh, as you want. Sometimes they won't. You have to check the league rules on that. The ones that are in a straight line, you cannot manage the reserve team, the B team. The ones like Dortmund, you can. You can manage Barcelona B in the game. You can be the Barcelona B manager and football manager. It's kind of weird. You obviously don't have a huge amount of say, but the club operates at a separate capacity. As a result, they are in a league, like an actual league, sometimes. Sometimes they're not. 
The Netherlands, for example, gets weird and it has like a Young blank league. But for some reason, Young Ajax and Young PSV are in the league system where the rest of the Dutch teams have their Young teams in the Young league. And they're all playing each other and they only play like 14 games. That's a particularly strange one. It's just another reason that B teams suck, honestly. So Dortmund's B team is in a league. What is the obvious problem with this if you are trying to get your players playing time? If these B teams are not in a league that you are currently in, which Dortmund 2 is in Regional League West, Dortmund 2 is semi pro. Another reason that these B team leagues are. <sighs> See, the issue here is that I don't have Regional League West in the game. In fact, Regional League West, which is one level below what's in the base game. So you have no way to add Regional League West to the game unless you want to do some extra digging, but I will talk about that later. This means that not only when I send my players down, they are not getting great training. They are not only working with a coaching staff that is not, uh, not quite as good because this is a B team separated from, you know, the rest of the squad, they're also not playing at all, which is very clearly not good for development, as you could imagine. One of the large issues that can pop up is that even when they are playing, we'll go to my Bate save for this next example. Even when they are playing, the type of playing experience that somebody in the reserves is getting pales in comparison to the type of experience they would be getting playing on loan somewhere. The only obstacle to this is the adaptability hidden attribute of the player. If the adaptability hidden attribute of the player is really low and you notice that on loan they're just not succeeding at all even though they're getting better experience, that might be the only excuse to keep around a reserve level player. So with Bate Borisov, you see I have actually a B team called the Bate Borisov Reserves. Now they play in the Belarusian Reserve Championship. They do quite well for themselves. But as you can imagine, the level of competition they're going to get in the Belarusian Reserve championship is not going to be nearly as high as if I loan them out to a top division anywhere. And this is the same with any league in the world, not just Belarus. If you are in England and you have a U23s team, which is typically what these English teams will have, where would you rather your player play? The top league in, I don't know, Switzerland or the U23 league in England? Now the counter argument to this is that you want them to be there at the club using the facilities uh, and then you can promote them to the senior team which i would recommend you just include them in the senior team squad already make them available for the reserves uh, and then they can be mentored by members of the senior staff while having their training led by members of the senior staff this move of course makes your b team your reserve team irrelevant the main point being made by the first half of this video then is that just signing people and filling up your reserve team because you feel like you need to fill up your reserve team with players, it not only sucks up obviously your wage resources, but it does not put players in a position to succeed that a loan would much more likely put them in a position to succeed or being brought up to the senior team and rotated into the squad once or twice would much more likely put them in a situation to succeed. Now, though, it is time to talk about how you can make reserve teams useful, because I wouldn't make a video about them being useless unless I told you how to turn them in to something that is useful for you to help keep your team at the top level. The first piece you are going to need is a search bar. This is for those that are going to be managing teams like Barcelona, like Dortmund, these teams that have B teams that could not be in the game. Barcelona is not a good example because their B team actually is in the base game, uh, but other teams in Spain, the majority of the teams in La Liga will have separate B teams that operate as a separate club uh, and they are not in the base game. So what you will do is search for Spanish lower leagues FM20. Steam Workshop. And if you're getting it from the Steam Workshop, you actually don't have to put a lot of effort in. Steam Workshop's great for this stuff. Probably better than going around and Googling things. You see all the different nations they've got expanded databases for. This looks like it's collected. Uh, 229 national databases. You do not need all this. Uh, let's search for Spain. Spain down to eight league levels. Looks good. You hit add, it'll pop up in this spot right here. 
Uh, and then all of a sudden your B team is going to be relevant. So you'll be able to send teams to them. They'll be able to get promoted to a higher league and your players will be playing a lot. And all of a sudden the worst type of B team becomes the best type because you can raise their level to, you know, the second league in Spain, which is Liga Una Dos Tres. Hey! Uno, the word's Uno, not Uno. Moving on. That's a fairly high level of competition and a very viable B team if you can get them up to that level. Now for other B teams, there are ways, like the one that I had at Bate Borisov, to make them useful. And what those leagues are useful for, those reserve leagues, are for getting your players fit. So if you have talented young players who are not quite at a first team level yet, I'd recommend putting them in the senior team because this leaves them available to mentoring. Mentoring, of course, is wonderful. I have a video about it that will be linked up there that you can check out after this one is done. Now, mentoring is only available if you're training in the same squad. So training in the reserve squad means you're only available to be mentored by those in the reserves. This is not nearly as useful as being mentored by the best players the club but people that don't play a lot in the senior team you still want them to be match sharp in case they are called upon to play in the senior team this is where typical reserve teams like the one that i have at bate is useful you see there are not a lot of players that are in this reserve team but a few of the players that are are players that are actually part of my senior team but they need some match sharpness so they play with the reserves essentially every time if you go to staff and you go to responsibilities and down to match you can tell your reserve coach to ask you every match who is available from your senior team and you can set it up to play 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, or 90 minutes of action to have one player play that uh, and try and pick up some match sharpness or if somebody's coming back from an injury to get them sharp again. And this will help fill out your reserve team. But what I don't want you to worry about and what I see a lot of people worry about and completely screw themselves with, you do not need to fill this team with a roster. And most of you don't have the extra room in your budget to afford to pay 23 players to sit on your reserves. If the reserve team does not have enough players, they bring up U19 players to fill the spot. And U19 players, most of them aren't that good, but they will bring up U19 players to fill the spot in the team. If you are unable to fill enough of the starting spots with people that you're sending down from before. And then the only other people that are passing through my reserves are just the people that I'm still interested in being first team players for me at some point, but I have not been able to secure loans for. So do not feel pressure to sign anybody that you don't think has a chance to play a role in your first team. Don't, because you can always spend the money better than that. So you can use your B teams as a bit of accelerant if they are the type of B team that is off to the side of the graph, or you can use your B teams as fitness farms and a nice staging area for all the people that you're trying to put out on loan. Look, they're not useful the way that you would think they would be useful. You have to find different ways to use them. And honestly, if your board asks you, if you want to renew your reserve team, uh, like your reserve team league spot. It does cost money to travel the team around and everything. So you might want to turn that down if it's not providing you enough of an advantage. You would always rather send somebody out on loan than play in your reserve leagues, unless you're talking about loaning them to the Sri Lankan top league. That's probably worse, although I don't know for sure, than the English U23s divisions. Because at least in England, they get to play in the cup. I, I don't remember what the cup's called, but it's that weird cup where the U23s and the top leagues play everybody else and they still be them anyways a lot of fun that's actually a really cool idea i think more people should do that and they're closer to making it relevant now you have an idea of what you can do with your b teams and you have an idea of how to go out and add these leagues that are going to make playing with Borussia dortmund a little more tolerable so go forth and enjoy i will see you on a stream soon surprised i haven't run out of air yet that was a long spiel